Welcome to Searching for History. We've been thinking it would be cool to share with you guys our experiences driving in Germany. So in this video, we're going to talk about our experiences and uh, let you know what it's like. It really isn't that different than in the USA, but there are differences. Um, they do drive on the right side of the road. And a stop sign is a stop sign, although pretty much everything else is different. But there are some similarities. Number one, German road and traffic signs. It's helpful to study the signs before you drive. And it's good to have a passenger or a co-pilot that can uh, help you look up what signs are as you're driving down the road because, you know, it's not so easy for the driver to do that. Yeah, I think there was one time where um, we, saw, we kept seeing signs uh, that was like a squiggly line, and it was a caution sign for water over the roadway. And if I hadn't been able to look it up on my phone, then we wouldn't have known to be cautious around those spots. So there's quite a few different traffic signs. Like we were saying, it's really good to study up on them and understand what you're looking at. Like a red circle with a number in it, you know, that's the speed limit. And, you know, and then largely, the signs are quite similar to here in the United States. When you're on the interstate versus the Autobahn, you know, overhead you'll have uh, so many miles to the next city or the next, uh, you know, Autobahn or, or exit or things like that. Well, speaking of traveling on the Autobahn, you'll see a lot of signs that say Ausfahrt, and um, it's not, you're not actually going to a town called Ausfahrt or a place called Ausfahrt. That just means uh, the way off the Autobahn or exit. So, yeah, the joke we like to do is we're, we're just driving in circles around the town of Ausfahrt. <laughs> So one thing to keep in mind when you're driving around, um, if you're anything like us, you're searching for historical sites, and if you see the brown signs, that's, that's where you want to go. So any castle or you know, palace, things like that, um, it's going to be on a brown sign and with an arrow saying, go this way. Is it in the hearts region where you see the different witches on the... Yeah. On the brown signs, we play a little game where you can find the witches on all the brown signs. And some, some of the witches are like good witches, and some of them are evil witches. Number two, the Autobahn. One thing to really keep in mind is when you're on the Autobahn, the left lane is for passing only. I know here in the United States, it seems to be kind of like everyone knows that rule, but doesn't always follow it. There, you have to pass and then get back over because if you don't, before you know it, you're going to have some kind of European sports car like right on your tail or, or a really fast motorcycle or something. So you get over to the, to the left and you come right back. Something we've noticed the last several times we've traveled in Germany is there's quite a bit of road construction on the Autobahn. And they developed a program, kind of psychological program, to help people uh, emotionally deal with the frustration of road construction. So you might see, as you approach a road construction area, different em emoticon signs. And there's, you know, so there's uh, like sad faces and angry faces and then eventually happy faces as you move through the road construction. And we've been shocked that it actually does help us like feel better about getting through the road construction. It would be interesting if they could implement that here. Well, it's, it's fun to, just to see that uh, the empathy that yeah. the signs are having with your frustration. So <laughs> right. you see kind of the angry, frowny face that eventually turns, in, that's red, the, but then eventually turns into a green, happy face. One thing to talk about with the Autobahn, especially compared to in the United States, is the on and off ramps are really short and quick. And what I mean by quick is, is you're, you know, it's kind of a tight turn and then you're just 
on the Autobahn having to go super fast. Where here in the United States, you seem to have a longer you know, runway to get up to speed. There, you're just expected to go yeah. fast. You have to accelerate quite quickly and be very aware of merging very, very quickly onto the Autobahn. So, because you're right there. Um, it, an exit or an entrance will, it, it just spits you right out. Yeah, and then the reverse is true, is you're going really fast on the Autobahn, you take an exit, and then you're immediately slowing down, and it's... Uh, and you're in town. Yeah, somewhere. and then you're in a town, and you have to go slow. Okay, so driving on the Autobahn, there's the Autobahn rest stops. Most rest stops have gas stations and restaurants. If you see a sign for a rest stop that does not show gas stations and restaurants, I would skip those. Those tend to be truck stops and they're usually pretty gross. So look for the ones that have the sign that's the sign indicating gas and food. Yeah, so it'll be a, a blue sign. Um, it'll say Rosthof and uh, it'll have uh, a little gas pump symbol and then uh, a knife and a fork crossing each other. That's, uh, that's what you're looking for. Our favorite... Um, rest stops to look out for are ones that have Burger Kings at them. We found that Burger King in Germany has a, it has a really fresh and limited menu. So those are fun. Number three, pain to use the restroom. So one difference is at a rest stop or really anywhere in Germany, you're going to run into, you have to pay to use the restroom. And it's a good use for those coins that are kind of building up in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes, especially at the gas stations, if you get a receipt as you come out of, of the bathroom, then, then hold on to that because when you buy something, you give it to the cashier and you usually get a small discount. So if you buy, I don't know, soda or snacks or water or whatever you want to buy at your rest stop gas station, you'll get a small discount. Number four, speeding tickets. There's one thing that uh, you really need to hear about when you're driving in Germany is speeding tickets, and they're really easy to get. Uh, you're going to find that the, the, the speed, um, you'll, you'll be able to drive as fast as you want. There'll be no speed limit, and then just a minute later, all of a sudden, you're going really slow. And it's tricky because the speed signs aren't always where you think they are. So most of the time they're on the side of the road, but occasionally as you're going into a village, something like that, they could actually be painted on the ground. And how it works over there, at least in my experience, is, is you're not getting pulled over by, you know, the police eye. You are actually going past a, a camera and you'll see a big flash. And uh, unfortunately I've had this experience a couple of times so if you see that flash, you know you've gotten a speeding ticket. And then a few weeks later, you will get a letter in the mail from the, you know, the, the German state or, or city that the ticket took place in. You'll end up with a little envelope like this in the mail. Inside, there'll be a letter that's completely in German and even though I speak a little German my vocabulary doesn't include anything that has to do with getting a speeding ticket so then it's like you have to figure out how to translate it and figure out how to pay um, and you know at first my thought was well do I really need to pay this but looking into it um, you do uh, that you could be sent to a collection agency you really need to pay it this particular speeding ticket I, I got was uh, for 88 euros and 50 cents. Luckily, I was able to go to a website, a web address in, in this uh, letter, and then pay using PayPal. So it, that worked out. You know, I've been driving in Germany since the early 2000s, so, you know, off and on for the last 20 years. And this wasn't a problem in the beginning, but now it, it seems to have become more and more of a thing where there's these uh, camera speed traps all over the place and you won't realize that the, the speed limit has gone down or you're slowing down but you didn't slow down quick enough and then you see the flash and, and, and now you have a ticket coming in the mail. 
Avoiding the speed trap cameras is one of the reasons to drive on the Audubon more than the back roads. Um, the areas where I think it's the most challenging to, to see what the speed limits are is when you drive on a back road uh, and you're going in between a lot of small towns and villages. Because all true. of the small towns and villages will have a slow speed limit. I've gotten three speeding tickets, and out of those three, none of them were from the Autobahn. Right. The, it's, it is the, the back roads, um, going through small villages, uh, things like that. So uh, definitely I recommend take the Autobahn as far as you can go and then get on the secondary roads. That way you'll, you'll avoid the risk of so many speeding tickets. Because if you just mindlessly drive as fast as you want across Germany, you'll get home and have, have dozens and dozens maybe of tickets. Maybe a hundred of speeding tickets. I mean, you'd have yeah. a lot of speeding tickets. You would. Number five, parking. So one thing to talk about uh, when you're driving in Germany is parking. And it's not always so easy to figure out where to park. Every parking lot has different rules. And so how I get around that is uh, nowadays on your smartphone, you can put a translation app on it. You know, I use Google Translate and I have German downloaded onto my phone. And so, you know, I'll just end up pointing the phone at, at the sign, translating what it says, and then I know exactly what the rules are. It's pretty cool. And there's really no other way around it. Um, lots of times you'll, you'll see where it says to park and you have to go buy a ticket that you put on your dash, S simple things like that. I think before we had the translation app, we were using, you know, little phrase books, but a lot of those are not specific enough to parking rules to really know what, what you're supposed to do. And there's a lot of small parking lots that, you know, are, um, they seem like public parking lots, but really they're only for certain businesses or hotels you have to be mindful that where you're parking is actually a public parking lot. Yeah, and, and you'll see Germans parking all over the place, you know, with two, two wheels up on the sidewalk and two on the road and things like that. And I don't know what, what or how they do that legally. And uh, I personally would just avoid that and just find a legitimate parking lot. Yeah, even if you see people doing that, I've always assumed that it's because they they either live in in yeah. the areas you know right next to that spot, or they're they're doing some kind of business right there. Something there's some reason, but I, myself as a driver in Germany, I don't feel like that's a good idea to to mimic that. Yeah, well, especially when you're driving a rental car, you don't want it to be sideswiped by some. Some, or, somebody or, else. Or towed away. Or towed and away. And now I have to figure out the German culture of retrieving your car from a tow company. Yeah, that's true. So one thing that uh, you will encounter is a parking clock. And when you rent a car, a lot of times there's this parking clock in your rental car. Yeah, in the glove compartment or in something like, like that. a pocket on the door. Um, so that's for use parking on the street. There's going to be designated places that require a parking clock. And it's, it's just this little blue, uh, sometimes plastic. I've seen ones that are cardboard that has a clock in it that you spin and you set the time where you, that you started parking. And then you put it in your, in your window, uh, in, you know, on your dash. So to continue talking about parking, a lot of times when you're parking near cities or in cities you'll need to find a parking garage and sometimes those parking garages are are really busy and they're full but if you simply wait in the queue one car will come out and then each car will filter in and be able to find a spot so it's it's best to just get to the parking garage that you want to park at that's close to wherever you're sightseeing and then just wait, wait in the line, uh, and somebody will always come out. Yeah, I mean, you might have to wait ten minutes, fifteen minutes at the most. But if if the parking lot's full, you just get in line, and, uh, and then you'll be able to go in. So 
it's worth waiting rather than kind of panicking oh no the garage is full right. and then you're searching for another place to park. driving around and around it's it's not it's not a good feeling to have that kind of panicked like i'll never find a parking space you will find a parking space so just be patient number six day trips into the city and an another strategy we've come up with is you know you don't always have to park in the city yeah, that's true. It's sometimes it's good to park outside the city and take a train in. So we did that when we went from, we were staying in Meissen and we wanted to do a day trip into Dresden, which, which is a great day trip. So we took the train in and it was, and it's a great um, opportunity if you're tr traveling mostly by car to have those little bursts of train travel is, is a really fun tourist experience. Yeah. And in some of these cities, I mean, we don't live in a big city, so we're not really used to driving in them. And uh, there's so much traffic and it just feels so chaotic and stressful that it's so much easier just to leave your car in the town you're staying and then just day trip in on using public transportation. One thing that I wanted to add is um, driving in a big city in Germany can sometimes be confusing, not just because it's a big city and maybe you're not used to that but also because there's uh, some pedestrian zones and so there's areas where cars can't go and there's also lots of trams you know like tramways and so it's quite unnerving to drive around yeah. a corner and all of a sudden you're looking at a tram that's that's not that's I've, no good <laughs> i've accidentally found myself driving where only trams are supposed to go <laughs> yeah. so and number seven car rental so driving in germany one thing to talk about is car rental and uh, for peace of mind i always get the collision damage waiver i just want to know that if i get in a car accident or something happens that you know i'm not going to have some you know tens of thousands of dollars bill waiting for me so uh, the peace of mind of a collision damage waiver is worth it you know it adds it adds some money, you know, maybe $10, $15 to every day, but it's worth it. And don't pay f extra for GPS in your car. Uh, lots of times cars just have it already, and so you're really paying for nothing. And then, of course, you can just use Google Maps on your smartphone, and it works great in Europe. So, mm -hmm. you know, I would never, never pay extra for, G for GPS. And I would advise do not rent a car bigger than you need. There's lots of tight places to fit a car. So whether it's small parking lots and in, in parking garages or parking places, um, or just to get into a quaint little village that has a medieval gate, those gates were not built for, <laughs> for cars to go through. So. Yeah, I mean, they're built for carriages, and then if your car's too big, you can't drive through. Right. So, yeah, definitely um, smaller is better yeah. in Germany, for sure. Well, that's all we have to say about driving in Germany. While it can be challenging at times, it actually is really fun to drive in Germany. And uh, we hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like, share, comment on this video, and please subscribe to this channel. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.